So the video indexer in Fast Video Cataloger is the core of the program. The video indexer is what takes a source video file, it extracts images from the video, uh, it extracts metadata, and it adds it to the catalog. So in preferences, to control the video indexer, uh, you go to the video indexer tab. So the first thing you can control is when we take the first capture from the video, like how many seconds in from the start. So normally a video has perhaps like a intro intro image or it's like uh, some intro video that you want to skip uh, before the actual content of the video starts so you might want to set that to a few seconds more than how you capture after that then after the first screen is captured you can control like how often we're gonna capture frames so this is after the first how long is are we gonna wait until we take the second the third the fourth frames uh, and then we have the last option here that is like setting a minimum number of frames to capture from a video so if you have uh, a short video where like uh, s let's say you have a 20 second video and you set capture video frame after 20 seconds that would actually not capture anything but if you set this but capture at least two frames then we're gonna instead of these two first numbers just see how many captures do we need to get two frames from this video so then you're gonna get one after five and one after 15 seconds in this case of a 20 second video next option is resize video frame this basically tells you how large thumbnails we're gonna capture from the video so the larger here uh, of course the larger thumbnails you're gonna have um, so this is gonna have a very big impact on the size of your catalog file so my recommendation is 320 if you put this to a very high number you're gonna get a really large database I would not recommend that if you put it too low then gonna have really low resolution video frames the video catalog gonna be smaller but uh, not going to be as detailed so there is some balance so first time you use the program I would recommend that you test a bit like to get a good value for the source material you're working with so uh, but, but once you've set this uh, I wouldn't change it uh, I mean it should be the same for every catalog so my recommendation is somewhere between 160 and 320 so we're going through the options for the video indexer so let's have a look at the video indexer first of all that's the add a video dialog it's basically a range so there are four steps to go through to add videos to your catalog uh, first you need to add videos so you have two options add a single video or scan an entire folder of videos so that's to the scan click there select a source folder and then it's gonna add the videos in that folder and every subfolder and it does search subfolders because I have this include subfolders checkbox checked the next one here that's also checked is skip added that's basically gonna ignore every video in that folder that is already in the catalog next option you see here is that I have set auto indexing uh, that's gonna out automatically add videos as they are added to this folder and I can control that from the video auto index preferences now we have a list of videos let's check the next option here here you can uh, set for this batch of videos how the thumbnail period should be set so normally it just used from preferences uh, as we've gone through before or you can override it with a few common options uh, next option is to be able to set some shared properties for this whole batch of videos you can set keywords for all of them so uh, these are all screen captures so I let's add a keyword for that screen captures uh, genre I can set the genre for all of these I actually don't use this myself I highly recommend using keywords instead you can set a rating for all the videos you can add a source link to all the videos, a description to all the videos, 
and you can have actors to all the videos. So this is a convenient way to just set some base property for the batch of videos you're adding to your catalog. Last option is basically to index videos. So here I just press start and start index them. Now the program goes through them one by one, add them to the catalog and then yeah it's gonna get done eventually. As the program is doing this you can continue working with it, it's gonna be slower, it's doing quite a lot of work going through the videos, extracting video frames, adding them to the catalog and so on. But it's it's gonna work if you wanna work while doing this if you have a lot of videos. So we are indexing videos from the list we added. Uh, you can click stop to stop the list, you can skip a specific video if, if there it's slow or if there's a problem with it. You can so let's do this now we do stop you can start it again or you can clear the list of videos here or uh, yeah remove one of the selected so I don't want that and I don't want that uh, and then I start it's gonna continue like that next option is uh, how the program should extract metadata from the videos so this first option is to look for NFO files named the same as the video. That's basically a text file with data about the video. There's a number of programs that extract, the, like create these files, uh, and the, this option allows you to read description and keywords from that file and add that to the catalog with the video. The next option is to actually scan metadata from the video file. So this is going to extract a bunch of different metadata and it's going to add s description, keywords as keywords and it's going to add the rest of this extracted metadata as extended properties. Um, next option, uh, this is also based on the metadata extracted. So if you decided to extract metadata from the video files, there is one option that says the video has been rotated. And if that is that, uh, it basically means that uh, videos would end up uh, rotating 90 degrees. So this, if this option is set, it's going to check if that's set and then you're going to rotate them back so they look normal on your screen. So this whole thing is basically when people take videos with cameras uh, that are rotated. Uh, so then the camera stores a bit saying if if the video was recorded rotated or not. Um, so next option, after adding video, refresh search. So this basically uh, does a, the same search again after you added a video. Um, so this can, I mean it's good because if you add a video with the keyword you have in your search you're gonna see them right away. On the other hand, uh, it can be annoying if the list of videos get refreshed if you're working with the program at the same time as you are indexing the videos. So those options are basically the basic options for extracting uh, data from the video. Then we have two more, uh, these burst capture time step and burst capture length. If you right click, click on a video frame there is an option called burst capture this basically lets you extract more frames from the video starting at the selected frame. So the first option here is for how many seconds we're gonna extract video frames from the selected thumbnail and then the next option is for how many frames you want to get there. So this kind of allow you to have low resolution for the whole video and then hone in on the part of the video that is of more interest. And now you see we have uh, added some videos. You can see them in the video catalog window uh, and you can select them as you want. Uh, and as I said before, uh, there is a right click here. You can do burst capture and then you're gonna add more frames from that specific, specific frame. Uh, you see here, it's first and every second I have a video frame captured. So mask video files and delete source files, these are option for protecting your catalog and encrypting the video files. If you check this, uh, the video file is going to be encrypted, uh, so you can't read it with outside software. 
uh, you can still view it in the internal video player uh, or external video player that has support for encrypted videos. Uh, delete source file, that's basically gonna say that once the video has been encrypted after indexing, you're gonna delete the source file, EVA, the non-encrypted files. The last two options are uh, just a debug option uh, for our internal support if that is needed so just ignore that for now and then the very last option is use video filters if that is checked it's going to ignore the built-in filters for extracting uh, thumbnails from a video and instead use what's installed on your computer so this option i would not recommend using it unless there is a problem with extracting frames from a video and that should normally only happen if you have very rare video formats um, so normally don't check that one so I want to show you one last thing here I have a selected video uh, and I select where I want to capture I do click on the icon here and then I'm gonna add a single frame to the video so here you see it's uh, the frame at 151 and here is added frame for 151.